Welcome to Power Up, the uptime podcast focused on the new hot off the press technology that can change the world. Follow along with me, Alan Hall, and Itosaur's Phil Totaro as we discuss the weird, the wild, and the game-changing ideas that will charge your energy future. Hey, Phil, the first thing on our list today is a unique patent idea from Siemens Gamesa, which is for a wind turbine nacelle with movable sections to expand it out, kind of like Louis Armstrong's cheeks when he's blowing that trumpet. It just pops out and gives you a little more, a little more space to get some work done on the nacelles. This is a pretty cool idea. Even though I have, we've seen other versions of this, we haven't seen an expandable version of this. Others have tried something similar though, right? Yeah, so the, Alan, this is basically uh, what I've dubbed like the accordion nacelle, or uh, you know, bag bagpipe nacelle. I don't, I don't know what you want to, how you want to label it, but the the idea here is, and and look, the the bottom line is, I to be blunt, I actually think this is a terrible patent, uh, but it's a clever idea, and I'll explain what I mean by all that. So in the world of going and and you know capturing innovation, uh, whatever industry you're in. You want to be able to capture patentable ideas on things that, A, you're going to use and manufacture, because then it's, it's protecting your own business, um, or you want to get patents on things that are actually things that a competitor might want to use, and by having the patent, you basically blocked them from, from going down that technological path. Um, unfortunately, I don't think that this is... A, uh, this particular patent from Siemens Gamesa accomplishes that because I don't think that they're going to use this idea and I don't think that uh, competitors would necessarily use this idea. So, if, however, um, what I do like about this is the, the inventiveness of the concept and, and the way that the engineers were thinking and doing the creative problem solving around a legitimate transportation-related issue that we have in the industry. So for those of you that aren't familiar, there are certain transportation constraints that we've got in, in wind energy where, particularly if you're trying to ship something, you know, that has to fit underneath a bridge overpass or through a tunnel, um, you might have certain restrictions on things like the nacelle width and height. Um, the blade root, the maximum cord of a blade, things like that, or even the tower diameter. Um, and it creates certain technological challenges. And so that's actually why I flagged this idea to talk about today is because this is really great problem solving and very creative problem solving to say, look, we've got this challenge where in order to transport something, it's got to fit within those constraints of being, you know, approximately 4.2 meters, uh, or less. Um, it's about what, 22, 23 feet or less, um, uh, you know, for, for those of us, uh, on the, on the English system. Uh, <laughs> but the, the, there are different ways to skin a cat, basically. Um, Vestas has come up with this idea of having, um, basically cargo containers that are converted or specifically manufactured is probably the better way to say it, um, so that they can bolt onto the sides. Um, and they're using that on their uh, offshore machines, the V-236. They're actually also, if you haven't noticed, they're using it on the onshore 7 megawatt turbine as well. Um, they actually have an nacelle with um, an extra kind of cargo container or shipping container sized thing, um, you know, bolted down to the right or left hand side of, of the nacelle. Um, to provide them additional space for for all the up tower components, the the hydraulic system, the cooling system, um, you know, pumps, motors, fans for lubrication systems. The you know if they've got uh, I don't well they don't have an up tower transformer anymore, but um, any of the other electrical cabinets or anything else that they need up tower, they've got to have some extra space. So going again, going back to the Siemens Gamesa invention. Is it a good patent? No, because I think, as I explained, it doesn't really accomplish what you need a patent to accomplish. Is it a good, clever invention and, and technological solution and, and creative problem solving? Absolutely. And I, I encourage that and I applaud that. So even though this idea might not get used, it's, it's still a, a very clever way to, to tackle a, a relevant industry challenge. 
Well, another industry challenge is leading edge protection. And our friends at LM Windpower have come up with some really uh, simple tools, sort of ingenious tools to create those leading edge shells. And if you've seen these protective devices, they're kind of floppy. They're not solid. And one of the critical pieces of that is to make sure that the trailing edge of that is cut cleanly and crisply. So you don't create any kind of aerodynamic problems. Plus, it makes it a little bit easier to install because you're working along a straight line. However, Phil, if you've ever tried to cut like uh, jelly or something that's moving, it's pretty hard to get a straight line. And that's what it's like cutting those materials. You want to shift every time you apply some force to them. So this is a kind of an interesting concept to figure out how to basically trim something that's pretty flexible. Yeah, so this this is a it's a relatively simple innovation in terms of it's just basically a, a kind of like a table almost with a little um, you know circular saw at least that's how they've conceptualized it in the in the the patent application they've got. Um, but what what's clever about it in addition to what you just mentioned, Alan, it's it's necessary to be able to um, shape the um, the leading edge um, protection strip so that it conforms to the shape of the blade and doesn't adversely impact the the aerodynamic profile on on the blade. Uh, and so you need to be able to cut a pretty precise straight line or curved line um, that doesn't have any of these you know uh, sharp ridges or anything or waves to it um, that that would otherwise impact the um, you know, that, that arrow performance. Um, so this is one where it's a pretty simple and straightforward innovation. We believe by the way, that this is actually, um, in production, um, that this is an invention that we think is, you know, TRL, you know, eight or nine, basically, if you're not familiar with technology readiness levels or TRLs, that's basically a measure from one up until nine, um, about the technological maturity. Um, so we're going to be referring to to this with some of the inventions we talk about. Um, this one, we think, is actually being used um, in some of the uh, the LM factories uh, or potentially some of their subcontractors that are that are making some of these uh, leading edge parts for them. Um, so this is a this is a very clever way of being able to accomplish something that provides both leading edge protection and uh, ensures aero performance. And as we move on to the electrical world, we have a concept from Vestas, which deals with the yaw control. And on an electrically driven yaw system, you got two two elements, basic elements. You have a, a motor or a series of motors, and you have a series of brakes. Pretty straightforward. However, th that if the turbine is connected to the grid and the grid frequency or voltage fluctuates, you can get some really strange results. Uh, one of them being is that you damage the brakes or drag the brakes, as they say, and create yourself an expensive repair to, get, to keep going out and fixing because the voltage on a wind turbine sometimes, depending on the time of day and where you are, does fluctuate a great deal. Yeah, this one's actually kind of fascinating because I had never really seen a company um, conceptualize a yaw control uh, strategy like this. So it it basically, if if you read through this this patent, what they're talking about is trying to um, use the uh, a detection circuit for whatever the grid voltage is, and use that as an input to the yaw control system, whether you're uh, continuing a yaw action or clamping on the, the brake. And the reason that I think Vestas came up with this is we've heard some feedback from folks in the field that uh, even though you may have yaw brakes that are segmented, um, and so you could unbolt a section of it if you know a piece of it got worn out, and that, that was an innovation that, that somebody came up with a, a long time ago, um, and that was a very clever one. But in order to prevent excessive wear, as you mentioned, Alan, on the on the yaw brakes um, and on the in the calipers themselves, um, because those are you know those are expensive parts, and we know there's been supply chain issues in the industry, and and it could be hard to get access to um, some of these replacement parts um, sometimes. 
So this is a pretty clever way of using the control system to ensure that the brakes don't drag or clamp uh, and hold and, and cause, um, you know, spalling or any other um, uh, type of thing that, that might happen from, from having the brakes clamped on uh, to an excessive degree. So measuring the, you know, the grid voltage and determining the grid um, uh, fluctuations as an input to your yaw control system was actually a pretty unique thing. And so that that's, uh, you know, kudos to, to Vestas for coming up with something pretty clever that I think solves a, a real world challenge. Well, here's a real world challenge, Bill. You know, when you, when you go out to the beach and you want to take a quick nap, I always bring a pillow. But the problem with that is you fall asleep and then you just get sunburned. You're, you're roasted like a raisin, right? So uh, it's not the greatest situation. So somebody's uh, come up with a really unique patent here, and this is our fun patent of the week, where they have attached an umbrella to a pillow. And this got approved. This is actual intellectual property, Phil. Yes, it is. <laughs> but just like I mentioned with Siemens, the question, Alan, is do we actually need a patent on something like this? I mean, maybe, you know, if Joel were here, he would probably say, you know what? That's a product I'd like to have. Um, but is this something that actually needs a patent? I'm not so sure. Um, but we find some of these patents sometimes that we just have to talk about because they're a little bit preposterous. Um, and we, we question whether or not the patent office is, uh, is really all there when they're, when they're approving these sometimes. I think this, uh, you know, pillow with an umbrella attached falls into that category, Alan. I don't, Phil, I've gone through this patent very thoroughly, and there is one piece of this patent which makes complete sense to me. Inside this little umbrella tube, there's an open end. You can unscrew it, and you can put your keys and your loose change in this to secure it so you won't lose your keys at the beach. I mean, how many times have you lost your keys at the beach? Well, that that is a real-world challenge, but I'll tell you, if there are you know insidious characters out there at the beach, I think the guy with a pillow that's got an umbrella attached is probably target number one for, for having, something, having something stolen. So you're probably going to get your keys anyway. 